In this video, we're going to be calculating the enthalpy of an acid-base reaction, also called the neutralization reactions. And this is a very similar setup. Uh, this is a very similar question you guys might be doing in the calorimetry experiment, where you mix an equal moles of an acid and base and try to figure out how much energy is going to be produced. And from how much energy that's produced, you can calculate the delta H. The way you figure out how much energy is produced is by calculating or by uh, by looking at, by measuring how much temperature rise you will have in the solution. So this question says you starting out with 50 milliliters or 0.1 molar NaOH, so that's going to be your base, and then it's mixed with 50 milliliters or 0.1 molar HCl, so that's your acid, and they were both initially at this temperature, so this would have been your initial temperature. Then two solutions are mixed in a calorimetry cup, so very likely you guys be using the foam cup, and that has the heat capacity given to be 5 joules per degree Celsius, and it's very likely you assume the heat capacity of those foam cups to be zero, which means they are a very good insulator. They are not going to lose the energy to the cup and to, and also to the surroundings. Or the, or you could actually measure the heat capacity before you actually run the neutralization reaction. So either one of those um, things are possible when you do the experiment in the lab. So then the resulting solution temperature rises to 28.4 and then you get a figure out the energy released during the neutralization reaction. And it also says you're going to be treating the solution just like water. Okay. So before we do anything, just go ahead and write down the reaction. So we have the NaOH, which is our base, reacting with HCl. And it's going to make H2O. So remember, the one of the products for acid-base reactions is always water, and then the other one is going to be the salt, which is going to be the NaCl in this particular case. And before you do anything, make sure your reaction is balanced, and it seems like uh, everything is balanced. So just double check the reaction is balanced. Okay, so then you want to go ahead and write down the information here. So I got 50 milliliters of NaOH here. I got 0.1 molar NaOH, and then as far as the HCl go, it's the same information. We got 50 milliliters of HCl and 0.1 molar HCl. So if we're using the same amount and same concentrations, that means both those acid and base will run out at the same time. So both of those would be the limiting reactant. So at the end of the day, you make water. So how much water are you going to be making or how much solution are you going to be making at the end of the day? If you're starting with 50 milliliters of acid and 50 milliliters of base, assuming the volumes are additive, your total solution is going to be 100 milliliters. All right. And since it's a 100 milliliters of solution, and we're treating the solution just like water, and you know the density of water is going to be 1.0 grams per milliliter. That means this 100 milliliters is actually going to be 100 grams of the solution. Okay, And then let's just go and write down other stuff in there. So we know the initial temperature is going to be 21.3 for both of the solutions. And then T final is going to be 28.4 degrees Celsius. And uh, the specific heat capacity for the water, so C for the water, is going to be 4.184 joules over grams degree Celsius. So this is for the solution. All right. So then don't forget you also have the foam cup. So for the foam cup, you also going to be looking at the heat capacity of the cup, which is just going to be a C, and that's 5.0 joules over degree Celsius and then your initial temperature and the final temperature would be the same for the foam cup as well because it's in thermal equilibrium with the solutions before and after mixing all right so keep in mind the delta T's would be the same here so the delta T here is going to be T final minus T initial 
and that's going to be 28.4 minus 21.3. So let's see what that comes out to be. So that's 7.1 degrees Celsius, and the delta T for that for the form cup is also going to be 7.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now once you do this acid-base reaction, it's in a highly exothermic reaction, which means it's going to release the heat, and that heat will be used to warm up the solution. Okay, so that's keep in mind it's going to be warming up the solution, and it's also going to be warming up the foam cup. So we can say I would have the Q of the solution here, which is going to be the MC for the solution, which is just water times the delta T. Okay, so your mass, remember it's going to be 100 grams, it's going to be 100 grams there. The specific heat capacity of water we have set is 4.184 joules over grams degree Celsius, and then the change in temperature is 7.1 degrees Celsius. So we can go and calculate the Q of the solution here, which is the heat absorbed by the solution. That's how you want to look at it. So 100 times 4.184 times 7.1. And that's going to be 2971. So 2971 joules of energy has been absorbed by this solution here. Okay, So then we can do the same thing. The Q of this calorimetry is going to be the heat capacity of the calorimetry times the change in temperature. So the heat capacity is 5.0 uh, joules over degree Celsius times 7.1 degree Celsius. So when you do this math, it's 5.0 times 7.1. So it's 35.5 degrees uh, joules here. So what that really means, when the acid and base reacted, it produced heat, and that heat was used to warm up the solution and the calorimetry. Um, so I would say the Q of the reaction is going to be equal to the Q of the solution plus the Q of the calorimetry, okay? And then keep in mind, it's going to be negative because since, think about this, you are releasing the heat, so it's going to be a, an exothermic reaction. So I can go ahead and write down the Q of the reaction to be negative of those two. So the heat lost by the reaction is actually heat gained by the solution. So if you want to do the sign conventions, you can say, the heat lost by the reaction here, so it's going to be minus, it's going to be equal to the plus of Q solutions and the Q of the calorimetry. So then you can go ahead and write down, you can just add those up. So when you add this up, it's going to be 2971 plus 35.5, and then you can figure out the Q of the solution there, or the Q of the reaction to be 2971 plus 35.5, that's going to be 3006.5 Q of the reaction, which is going to be negative. What really matters here the most is know that it's an exothermic reaction, so you're going to be releasing the heat. Okay, so it's, the negative sign just tells you the heat is released. And then, once you have your Q of the reaction calculated, you can calculate the delta H by doing this. You can uh, do the Q of the reaction divided by the moles of limiting reactant. And what's going to be the limiting reactant? And if you go back and look at uh, the amount of both acid and base that we have used, we have used the same amount and the concentrations for the base and the acid, and it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, so that means both of those will run out at the same time. So we can go ahead and calculate the moles for any one of those. So let's suppose I have 50 milliliters of HCl, which is going to be 
0 0.050 liters. So you can go ahead and you can use the definition of the molarity, which is going to be 0 0.1 moles of the HCl per liter, because remember uppercase M is moles divided by liters. So liters cancels out, and that gives you 0 0.005 moles of HCl. I mean, you could have done the same thing with the NaOH and you will have the same moles for that case as well. And then you can go ahead and calculate the delta H in that case. And it's going to be your Q, which is 3006.5 divided by 0 0.005 moles. Okay, so when you do this math, it's going to be coming out to be 601,300 joules per mole with a negative sign, which literally tells you it's an exothermic reaction. So that's how you're going to be calculating the delta H of the neutralization reactions. And if you have any questions, leave the comments below.